that the pandemic could have given you a break from Valentine's Day, or you may love it and be planning a weekend of love. Either way, there is a genre of card out there that you may or may not be familiar with or of, because I have to say, I hadn't seen this until it was brought to my attention by a woman we're going to hear from shortly with regards to stalking. There is a stalking genre. It's trying to be funny around Valentine's Day and people loving each other so much. There's cards such as Happy Valentine's from your favourite stalker. I'll give you some more examples and describe how those cards look in a minute. But what I wanted to know from you is, have you seen these? A lot of people, of course, shopping for their cards online this year. They may have already been doing that, but more and more people, you have to because of the shops not being open. Although, of course, in some supermarkets, you can get cards. Have you seen them? Have you reacted to them? What do you make of them? Do you want them to be banned or would you not go that far? Tell us what you make of this and your reaction to that, because, of course, it follows a rise of irreverent cards that perhaps are crossing a line for you and for many others. 84844 is the number you need with regards to text messaging us. Those texts, of course, charge at your standard message rate. You can email us via the website or on social media. We're at BBC Women's Hour. A couple of messages and reactions already on this. Uh, somebody called Shane says, Oh, Emma, I was having a cheery morning looking at Weetabix and Heinz posts until I saw this and I stopped in my tracks. Having been a victim of this, I find it deeply upsetting almost 30 years on having been a victim of stalking. Shane, thank you for getting in touch with us on social media. Uh, one from David here says, I've not seen these before. I suspect they're meant to be humorous, but they are creepy. And if sent by somebody you know, maybe they could raise a smile, but I'm not sure a recipient would be too pleased to receive one anonymously. I'm naturally against banning everything we disagree with, but these card producers should show better taste. Also today, we speak to a former employee of the Tavistock Clinic about his view on children being allowed to take puberty blockers. And how is Pip Hair doing? The Vendée Globe solo round the world sailing race is considered to be one of the toughest sporting competitions and she's on the home straight. We're hoping, we're very much hoping to speak to her live from the Atlantic. We'll keep that towards the end of the programme to make sure we can get that line up, but we'll do our best. So back to this stalking genre, genre in Valentine's cards. Slogans on cards such as your stalker wishes you a happy Valentine's Day, picturing a male baseball player with a bat, or every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you with two eyes at the bottom of the card. Or another one that says stalker is a hard word, I prefer Valentine. Katie Bourne, Sussex Police and Crime Commissioner and the main spokesperson on stalking for the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners, is trying to have these cards banned. Other examples, just to give you more of a flavour, I'd kill for you. Your stalker wishes you a happy Valentine's Day. I watch you when you're sleeping. Or, simply words on a card, if you knew how much I loved you, you'd be terrified. Katie Bourne, good morning. Good morning. Tell us how you first saw these cards. I was searching uh, across the internet to look for a Valentine's card for my husband. The cat's out the bag now, so he knows he's <laughs> going to get one. And uh, and I just happened to come across um, uh, this particular card that featured um, uh, the figure from a recent show on Netflix. And uh, and I thought, it can't be, because I've seen this, this program myself. It's all about a stalker and how he eventually uh, kidnaps his victim and then kills her. Um, and sure enough, it was. And when I looked a bit deep, more deeply into it, I found there were many of these cards um, across one particular platform and then another platform as well. So I sent out a tweet um, asking the platform I'd been looking at, Thoughtful, to remove it. In fairness to them, within 24 hours, they apologised publicly and removed it. But then when we did a bit more digging, it's across other platforms as well. Yes, and, and the one that you, you mentioned in your tweet, and I'll mention here now because we have been in touch with them this morning, is Etsy. Um, and we've, we've got in touch with them for a statement this morning, but we haven't heard back. Well, I mean, how surprising is that? It's, it's, I think it's pretty shocking, actually. And if you go on their website and you put in stalking and cards, there are over 500 stalking cards available on that website. And I just think it's absolutely appalling. In this day and age, in the 21st century, that we find this sort of thing funny is just so wrong. It trivializes this crime. Stalking is now a crime. You know, it's not a joke anymore. And this is not about a bit of banter. And let's face it, we all know where a bit of banter gets us. It, it propelled the whole Me Too movement. So really, why are companies like this who have a responsibility, not just 
to us as customers, but also to their investors, why are they allowing themselves to be associated with well, these cards? Etsy are not here to respond for themselves. And if we get a statement, we'll share it as and when. Um, perhaps they, they would say uh, that they have third party suppliers. But the, the bigger point remains these cards are available and you can buy them online. And in the run up to Valentine's Day, they may be what some people go for. I mean, this is the thing. Products often only stay in place if they're selling. Mm. Who's buying? Well, well it, 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 it beggars belief, quite frankly. I mean, if the whole idea of Valentine's card, Valentine's Day is about sharing love and showing affection um, for everybody. But I don't find these cards uh, affectionate at all. You, you have um, a, I mean, you could feel like this anyway, but you have an additional reason as to why you don't find cards making light and making jokes of stalking funny. I do. Um, when I came into office just over um, eight years ago, unfortunately, I became the victim of a, of a stalker myself. It all started online uh, with cyber stalking. And just a, an interesting statistic for you, 92% of all domestic homicides have cyber stalking in them. <laughs> so we know what happens when this sort of thing goes wrong. Uh, and then it breached into the physical world. Um, this particular individual turned up at a meeting that I was doing, an after dinner speaking engagement, and filmed me unbeknown to me and posted it on uh, on on the, uh, a well-known channel afterwards. Uh, and then I did a charity ab sale, and another one of his um, friends that he'd incited to come came along and filmed me, and unbeknown to me, got access to my harness that I was wearing posted it the next day online and somebody else wrote underneath it you should have slit her rope now it was at this point i thought actually i can't ignore this anymore i did what many people do in the first instance i ignored it and i thought it'll go away don't give them attention but it didn't and it got worse and then it transferred from the online world into the physical world and that's when i tried to um, to to take action I know that you can't talk too much about the details of that case because it's it's live and you have taken action. But how how did that make you feel? Because you did, as you say, what a lot of people try to do and ignore it. Mm. Um, well, at, at first, you know, I, I made the mistake of thinking, well, I'm in public life, so I've got to expect this. But I had um, friends, some friends saying to me, actually, you, you shouldn't you have to put this in public life. This isn't right. Um, and I ignored it for three, maybe four years until it crossed into the physical world. In retrospect, I wish I'd done something sooner. And I've learned that actually the majority of stalking victims do ignore this when it happens to them. Many of them don't even recognize the stalking behaviors, especially if it's from somebody that they know or they've been in a relationship with. They often don't want to make a fuss because they don't want to get that person into trouble. They might lose their job and so on. But, but actually, this sort of fixated, obsessive behavior just does not stop. And, and it, you know, it's time now for all of us to call it out. Uh, stalking is a crime. And in terms of coming back to these cards, which started our discussion, did you hear the message that I re read out from one of our listeners, David, who said, while these are distasteful, creepy, perhaps if you know someone well enough, could raise a smile if they're not affected by this in any way that you are, or, or perhaps just don't feel about these cards the way that you do and many of our other listeners are getting in touch. But he still objects to it being banned, the idea of them being banned. What would you say to that? I, I've, I've seen that argument. You know, um, it, they, they hide behind the freedom of speech. But actually, stalking is a crime. It's not a joke. It's not something to be trivialized. If you trivialize it, you undermine what's happening to thousands of victims out there. We know this crime goes underreported. You know, in, in Sussex, uh, where I have responsibility for policing in its totality, we've seen a massive increase in the number of victims of stalking coming forwards. During lockdown, just this year alone, we saw a 70% increase in victims coming forwards who are being cyber stalked. You know, this is not uh, a trivial matter. And we know desperately what happens when it goes wrong. We've had a very prominent case just four years ago in Sussex where a young 19-year-old uh, woman was murdered by her stalker. So we absolutely have to get this right. The police response as well needs to be um, improved nationally. Why? As well as our criminal justice agencies. What's, well, what's, they're, go they're, what's going wrong with the police and the response to stalking? Because it is relatively recent, as you say, that it's become a crime. Some forces are doing are doing well on this, and I would say um, Sussex Police are, are definitely leading the way 
in how to respond to stalking. But again, you know, this is all off the back of, of some really terrible learning that they've had to go through. But um, other forces are just not recognizing the risk involved. They don't understand the difference between stalking and harassment. Um, uh, and, and because of that, when they arrive and they first meet a victim, if they downplay it to harassment, harassment has not uh, doesn't carry a, a prisonable sentence that stalking does. And they won't necessarily put the right safeguarding and protections around that victim. So massively important, the police get it right, but also criminal justice agencies, you know, the Crown Prosecution Service are still letting victims down. They're not prosecuting these cases despite the evidence in front of them. Thank you for talking to us this morning.